In 2012, Bob Green came very close to death from a serious infection. What started out as a last minute date night for him and his girlfriend, Letitia Brown, turned into a night they would never forget. Yeah, I had done good this quarter, so my boss gave me a raise, and I just wanted to celebrate with my girlfriend and not in the town. So I uh, took to this really nice restaurant that I know of. I got the steak, she got salmon. Uh, we went dancing, and while I was on the floor, my stomach started to feel a little bit upset. And it all went downhill from there. While having a night on the town with his girlfriend, Bob began to feel ill. The next morning, he woke up with the sweats and was seriously nauseous. Yeah, it was so hard to sleep that night. I was so hot and sweaty, throwing up all night. In the morning, my girlfriend, Letitia, rushed me to the hospital. So we got home, the food was great, the vibes were nice, and we went to bed, and the whole night, he just wasn't feeling well. I was like, what's going on? So in the morning, I decided, let's go to the hospital. And that's where we found out it was nothing to play with. It was serious. The doctors at the hospital diagnosed Bob with a superbug that is highly resistant to antibiotics. That superbug being MRSA. Doctors say that this bacteria is commonly contracted from direct contact with an infected individual and through touching contaminated inanimate objects. It is hard to pinpoint when Bob contracted the infection as the incubation period for the symptoms to present could have lasted anywhere from one to 10 days. My name is Patil Mixerte and I'm here reporting live in Oshawa, Ontario with Ontario Tech U News. Today we are reporting about an important issue that is affecting many Canadians and citizens globally. Antibiotic resistance and communicable diseases, specifically medicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, which is known as MRSA. Antibiotics are a type of antimicrobial that are medications used to increase the growth or kill bacteria that cause infections and illnesses. Antibiotic resistance occurs when bacteria become resistant to antibiotic drugs, which causes antibiotics to become less effective or fail entirely. Similarly, this is what is occurring with MRSA, which is a type of staph bacteria that is resistant to various types of antibiotics. When these bacteria become resistant to antibiotics, they can cause serious infections. MRSA infections have increased by 60% in Canadian communities since 2012. It is estimated that antibiotic resistant infections could cause 10 million deaths per year globally by the year 2050, with an estimated 2.4 million excess deaths in developed countries alone. Okay, now we will be transferring over to two doctors who will be discussing the current outbreak of MRSA. MRSA infections most commonly happen in hospitals and other healthcare settings, especially among immunocompromised patients. Um, though MRSA is not a reportable disease in Canada, laboratory-based surveillance in Sentinel Canadian hospitals have been carried out since 1995. MRSA can be spread through direct and indirect transmission. So far, at the hospital level, screening for patients has been a priority. This protocol is in place for every patient admitted to be screened for MRSA if they are deemed at risk. Infection prevention and control programs um, have also aided in the laboratory field. They test and document every specimen of infected patients and store as well as research this bacteria. Interprofessional communication has also been a huge step in dealing with this issue across several healthcare settings. The status of clients, patients, and or residents who have had, who currently have, and who have been in contact with the infection have been reported. Lastly, antibiotic stewardship programs have been shown to aid in the excessive use of antibiotics. So it is defined as an inappropriate and or overuse of antibiotics, which ultimately promote the spread of MRSA. This leads researchers to seek for new treatments. Today, all those actions continue to be utilized. The most effective action against the infection has been decolonization. This term refers to the use of topical agents like nasal antimicrobial ointments and body washes and or oral antibiotics to remove resistant bacteria from an infected individual. A Canadian study in 2007 
admitted that MRSA had been completely eradicated for at least three months with this action implemented alone. As it has been previously mentioned, the issue surrounding MRSA is due to antimicrobial resistance. MRSA is an opportunistic bacteria and can lead to further health conditions such as skin infection, pneumonia, and other surgical infections. That bacteria normally resides within and on our body and usually is not harmful to a person, but in long-term care facilities and hospitals, MRSA is especially dangerous due to its likelihood of infecting those who are immunocompromised. MRSA infections are also commonly seen in the cultivation of food livestock. Antimicrobial stewardship is a huge problem in this industry. Now we are transferring you over to our third guest, Jessica, who is an epidemiologist who has been following the MRSA outbreak since 2012. Hey, thank you for inviting me. Regarding the current outbreak of MRSA, reported incidents of the infection range from 5 to 60 percent within communities globally and commonly spread by contact with an infected person or items carrying the bacteria. So approximately 5% of patients in U.S. hospitals carry MRSA within their nose and their skin and is reported in the 2017 Canadian Antimicrobial Resistance Surveillance System. Overall rates of MRSA infections in Centennial Hospitals in Canada have increased from 2.84 cases to 3.31 cases per 10,000 patient days between 2011 and 2016. So it is important to understand that anyone can be at risk. An individual's risk increases with activities or places that are crowded, where skin-to-skin -skin contact is present, and involved shared equipment or supplies. Now, the good news is that drug-resistant bacteria spread the same way as non-resistant bacteria, so there are ways to prevent these types of infections. First, it, it is very important to practice good hygiene. This includes keeping your hands clean by washing them regularly throughout the day. Second would be to be cautious about using antibiotics and consulting your doctor or physician to get the best treatment. Lastly, since antimicrobial resistant bacteria commonly occur in hospitals, it is important to remind doctors and nurses to wash their hands before they touch you. There we have it. It's a wrap. Remember, practice safe prevention.